Hello! Welcome to Table Drop Zone. My name is Lok. And my name is Holger and we have no more sign behind us. <laughs> <laughs> and today we will have a very different video uh, because we have very very different background and climate. And you can see us wearing a kind of like a polar bear clothes now. <laughs> but it's an amazing scenery behind us. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so this video is a bit different. Uh, the main difference is we don't have our studio anymore, as you saw in the last video. We have not yet built up a new studio, but we are currently uh, in the beautiful countryside of Germany and we thought we'd use this amazing landscape uh, as a background instead to make it a bit different. However, it is a bit chilly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what that means in the end is that, yeah, uh, we are dressed up like this for now. So please bear with us. Yeah, we are so energetic to give you very new topic today. What's that hunger? The topic today is tools around wargaming. So not your typical, you know, what, what you generally know, your paintbrushes, etc. Which tools will you encounter, maybe need, maybe are interested in, maybe could improve your wargaming experience uh, or for your wargaming experience. And uh, yeah, so I say let's, let's dig in. Yeah, let's start. Okay, so the first thing you will probably need is a table. Because it's a tabletop wargaming. <laughs> exactly, so on a tabletop there's no wargaming. Um, and it, you will find that it's quite difficult to actually find a perfectly sized kitchen table or work desk or something like this. Because wargaming uh, ideally has a couple of very weird uh, um, sizes. For example, this battle mat is, is an exact square and Finding such a table that has this exact square shape is quite difficult. So how you get to a perfect wargaming table? A couple of things. The first thing is that um, you can of course buy for a lot of money a <laughs> pre-made wargaming table that's going to satisfy all your needs. But there are much cheaper solutions. One is you can just buy a cheap uh, um, uh, piece of wood for a desktop. Um, and uh, maybe stabilize it a little bit, put a couple of legs beneath it and then you have your finished wargaming table, self-made. It is actually pretty easy. You can get these cut in DIY stores typically uh, for you, so you don't even need to, need to put a saw onto it or anything like that. The second thing is you can just go to IKEA, buy two of the cheapest tables they have that fit the the knee, and then you have a square table at the end. Yeah, so as we had in uh, Singapore, exactly. we come by to uh, table surface and make it like foldable table. Exactly. <laughs> and you can also uh, find similar table sizes with uh, outdoor tables, etc. Uh, so there, there are many ways how you can combine two tables to essentially get mm -hmm. one. What you have to uh, understand is that there's going to be a potential gap in the middle uh, depending on the, on the, the shape of the, uh, of the tabletop. So you want tabletops that end on an, on an edge, on an exact 90 degree edge and not on a, on a rounded corner to not have this gap in there. Yeah, next topic is of course um, what we say, especially for, for Alpha Strike, card sleeves. So um, uh, in order to reuse these beautiful Alpha Strike cards again and again and again, you will want to buy card sleeves because here you can use non-permanent markers to essentially draw the dots for hits on. And you can even get fancier markers like this with a little sponge uh, that you don't have to use your fingers and then you know wipe the, the paint on something else at the end, but you can just wipe the card a little bit and it's clean again. Staying with this, you will want card sleeves with a, uh, with a covered side and, an, and, and a clear side. The reason is that um, the, the covered side allows you to hide the side of the, of the, the card that, you, that you're not using. So you can keep the team together as you had planned originally. So you know, otherwise the card turns on at some point and you know, which side was it now? <laughs> you, you have to figure that out again. Um, and the last thing is these dots. So these are little sticker dots you can buy for very cheap in every uh, uh, store you can find. And um, you can just put these onto the back of your cards 
so that you can keep your team uh, clearly separated from other teams. Mm -hmm. um, yep. on, a, on, a, on a quick glance, so that you always know, okay, uh, for this team, this pile of cards works, and for my other team, I have another pile of cards. So, next for the uh, game, you with uh, five very headphones to have a uh, small uh, pen and, and uh, some piece of uh, paper like this, because uh, during the game, you will need uh, some maybe like a short take note about all the things happen in the game. Maybe it's uh, also helpful for the future game, how you improve your strategy. Uh, and maybe some points that you need to, to remember during the game. Next, when you uh, play a long hour of uh, game, imagine that you will need a lot of water during the game. Otherwise, you will die before you can uh, win your enemy. Another way to win money. <laughs> <laughs> so what will you use to uh, drink water, a glass of water or a bottle of water? So we uh, found out that a leak proof um, bottle of water, water bottle <laughs> will be very helpful uh, because uh, it will save the whole table from uh, any uh, potential water damage. From a flood, <laughs> if you have a glass of water and you accidentally tip it over, then you know, you're suddenly having a nautical battle. <laughs> yeah. And uh, one other solution to uh, save the whole battle table is that you need to use the dice tray uh, because uh, when you roll the dice, sometimes you have very strong like uh, power to, to roll the dice. It can potentially touch any miniature and um, the terrain. It, it uh, will uh, maybe put on ship the terrain away and maybe make a small damage. So the dice tray will help you control the dice and it's also very nice to hold and roll the dice like that. Yeah, it just looks nice. And also, you know, dice fall off tables and dice can roll out of sight where then you have to start searching. Yeah, <laughs> you will take many time. And because the forest or so, then, you know, it gets difficult. Yeah, but when you feel it's fell down on the floor and you uh, try to just so <laughs> search for, for the dice and maybe even like uh, touch the, the whole table and make everything move. You don't yeah, want yeah. that. You don't want that after a few hours of playing. <laughs> and you nearly to win. <laughs> so dice uh, uh, tray is really a, a nice way to, to keep things in check and to make sure that uh, you know the dice are where they belong and not somewhere else in the room. <laughs> okay, let's get to the second topic, distance measuring. So this seems to be the most elementary part of wargaming. However, there is quite a bit of, of things to consider here. <laughs> so um, the first one, I mean, generally what, what do you need? You need something to measure each. This can be anything from the length of your finger to uh, uh, something, some, some thread you've uh, pre-measured or something like this. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the more convenient instruments that we have at our disposal. The first thing is measuring tapes. So there's two types of measuring tapes roughly. One is this <laughs> loose plastic thing and the other one is this sturdy uh, metal thing. And you can also keep at the length to measure things uh, uh, correctly. And um, now what are the pros and cons for this? So the first one, let's talk about the plastic thing. Now, since this is so, you know, flexible, you can actually measure more complex paths uh, mm -hmm. that your yeah. mech can take around corners, etc. quite easily with this. Um, it's also typically lighter than the metal ones and uh, with that the likelihood that you, you know, when you, when you measure something, uh, chip off some paint somewhere or move some, some uh, uh, terrain uh, is less likely. Um, however, if you want to reach the far end of the table, uh, oh! <laughs> it will get difficult so you will need a partner to hold it for you on the other end and if the table end is too far then this can become a problem for playing the game. Now on the other hand, the metal one, this mm -hmm. can be held very, very comfortably by one hand and you can measure very far distances on the table, uh, uh, right, right like that. Um, also, um, it can be used to really extend the uh, certain lines on the table, like mm -hmm. for example, the back of a mech can be measured or shown like this, that you know at what point another mech is, is in its back or where the firing arc is. And of course, um, it's you know reaching some 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 places uh, to to just see distances for for uh, for, for, for shooting etc. 
It's also quite easy with this because you can just hold one part over one Mac and then see where your Mac is standing and then you know how many points you need to add to the combat rolls. Yeah, and the thus me measuring tool is a Guahama plastic uh, measurement. It's very uh, nice because you can uh, see through and very short. So you can easily use this uh, for the kind of not so far long uh, distance uh, movement. And it's very nice to use for, for the kind of like uh, uh, short distance. Yeah. And uh, the next one is a foldable uh, ruler like this. So it can increase very long and it's very also very uh, nice to, to use it because it's uh, also very easy to hold by, by the hand. You cannot like um, shipment and, and movement. And, uh, but uh, on the other hand, it also can uh, uh, because it's hot. So it uh, can touch your uh, like terrain or your uh, miniature. The positive aspect about this is furthermore that you can also shape it in certain ways to also measure more complex paths. However, not mm. as good as the uh, plastic measuring tape. Yeah. Um, now, if you want to get real fancy, you can get one of these. <laughs> this is a laser measuring ta uh, measuring uh, uh, instrument for measuring distances. Um, now uh, you get a little red dot, and then you get an arrow, and then you get <laughs> the exact uh, uh, distance that that the, the miniature is away. Now the downside is you need space for it, so you can't just you know have it hover somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so you need around the Mac where you start measuring space to the other Mac. The positive aspect is it doubles as a line of sight uh, indicator, which actually also directly brings us to the next topic. Now we go to the third part of uh, our topic today, how we uh, measure the line of sight. It's always a big topic uh, whenever we, we play the game, whether uh, my Mac can shoot his Mac or not. <laughs> if we can. <laughs> so the so kind of like uh, easiest and cheapest uh, uh, way is that to use your iPhone to see <laughs> to see whether it uh, can hit or, or not and it's it's very like uh, it's the most uh, in accurate the way to to measure thing but for very uh, kind of like a clearly uh, line of sight it's very easy and simple and very short uh, but uh, Sometimes when it's uh, the angle, just like not really uh, direct, a little bit like uh, maybe part of the building, part of the tree in between, it can make a big discussion. Yeah, so the moment you're in a discussion, I mean, you've, you've all been there. It's kind of part of war game, of course, it's part of what makes it fun. I see your Mac, no you don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's not enough of my Mac to, to make any, any uh, that's more than, than, than uh, two-thirds two and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, to, to overcome this discussion a little bit or to make it a little bit more measurable, there are other methods. Uh, the first one of which is of course the metal measuring tape. If you have that at hand, it's the easiest thing to do. Just draw a line from Mac to Mac. Uh, can I still see you? Mm -hmm. Yes, no, yes. And then you have your answer uh, and uh, well, it is uh, very easy to hand, it's quite accurate, but the measuring tape has a certain broadness to it. Yeah. And that means that potentially you could measure from one edge to you know, the other edge and over, over a few inches. Uh, this can lead to, <laughs> to, to discussable inaccuracies again, right? <laughs> also, um, uh, just like before, uh, it can move terrain accidentally, it can uh, chip off um, paint, especially if you are mm. on a long distance. I'm not, I'm not going to hurt you, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> that you accidentally hit another Mac with it, or that it bends over, etc., and you hit a Mac. Um, this can lead to some paint damage. So, this is a good tool. You have it at hand typically, but it's not the best tool. Mm -hmm. So the next uh, tool we can use is uh, a string. Imagine that I can take this uh, as an example. So we need like uh, two people from uh, two other side to hold to hold uh, the, the, the the string like this. So you can uh, use this like to know that whether it can hit or not or any anything in in the uh, on the way. But the uh, most uh, uh, different part of that is sometimes it's uh, very difficult because uh, with, with the short distance and also uh, 
uh, near the in the middle of the table. So with yeah. two people holding the string, it can be difficult, and of course, it can so uh, make a potential of uh, like uh, touching uh, the terrain and uh, miniature too. And also that if you have a very slight dent in it, you just basically it, it lies on a piece of terrain and it's a, just a slight bend. There's again a bit of a, of a potential discussion there. Yeah. <laughs> How to make that string really straight, not a little bit like, like, like curving like this. <laughs> and the next uh, tool we want to introduce you is a laser point, laser pointer. So it's very helpful to, to see from the view of the like a shooter because uh, uh, no matter uh, uh, where uh, he is, like on the top of the mountain or maybe on the base uh, to shoot the, uh, 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 the kind of like higher position, so you can uh, make a very straight uh, laser light. So you know exactly where you can, whether or not uh, it can uh, shoot the uh, other uh, miniature. Yeah, so it's good for also vertical alignment. Yeah. Can I still see the, the Mac who's standing? on a higher plane than me. Mm. And uh, another really fancy method is then this uh, this tool, this, you, yeah, I, I showed it to you in a different <laughs> is This tool, this is a, a line laser, it creates a, a straight line on the table. Um, this has a lot of positive aspects. For one, it is super easy to use and it is very, very accurate and there's going to be no discussion about it, uh, whether there's line of sight or not. Uh, you can clearly see if the line hits an obstacle, you can clearly see what's in between uh, that, that line. Uh, and um, there's no accidental shifting of, any, uh, of anything because, line, uh, because light has not yet found the ability to move uh, uh, physical matter. And um, <laughs> it does of course do everything, uh, basically all the other, other tools do only better. <laughs> and uh, more expensive. <laughs> wow! It's snowing! It's snowing! <laughs> so wow. now we are standing on a snowy plane and it is actually snowing, which is absolutely amazing. Wow, that's amazing! <laughs> Thank you so much for your support. I hope you guys uh, enjoy our video today with very different and very beautiful, very nice uh, kind of like a nature studio. With a, down, yeah. with a <laughs> like uh, <laughs> with a snowing now, it's so it's like a miracle. Please do subscribe, leave a comment, tell us what you think. If you know other tools, maybe we can make a follow-up video to this as well. So uh, do leave it in the comments below. And that's all from us for now, and uh, just in time, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>